I've been training for more than 37 years now. I fell in love with health and fitness at a very young age. I was 13 years old, so that's more than 37 years now. And uh, I learned some very valuable lessons along the way. I've been a skinny kid. I've been a muscular teenager. I've been a muscular adult. I've been an obese adult and I've been everywhere in between. At age 51, my joints don't hurt. I'm able to carry a pretty good amount of muscle and I don't have any lingering injuries. And what I'm gonna share with you are my four most important things that I would tell myself if I could talk to my younger self. The four most important things I wish I had known. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode 13 of the Ethan LaRock Show, where I'm here to help you get your fitness back on track at any age and regardless of your current fitness level, so you can spend more quality time with your family, have a brighter outlook on life, and finally find the true joy that life has to offer. I'm your host, Ethan LaRock. I am so thankful that you are joining me today and that I can share these little tips and tricks with you to help you get to where you want to be as quickly as possible. For those of you listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Thanks for listening and thanks for sharing your reviews. You guys are awesome. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. And I hope you're starting to implement some of these little tips and tricks that I share each week into your lives. And if there's anything you wanna see in a future episode, please feel free to drop me a comment or a suggestion and I'll take a look at it and see what I can do. Imagine what 37 plus years of experience with health and fitness have taught me. Imagine the struggles that I went through along the way. Going from being a skinny kid to being a muscular person, to losing it all and becoming obese, and then gaining it all back the hard way, and then losing it all again and becoming obese, and then finally finding the answers that I have today. Imagine what that has taught me. Imagine what living a busy lifestyle, making a living, supporting my family, being there for my family, while still being able to maintain my health and fitness along the way. Imagine what that's taught me. Well, this week, I took a step back and I've listed out the four things, the four most important things that I would share with my younger self if I could talk to him in front of me today. Things that would help maybe save me some anguish in life, help me get to where I want to be in the fastest way possible, and help me save all that wasted time and wasted effort that I put in along the way, chasing things that I really didn't need to be chasing. And those are the four things I'm going to get in today and I'm going to share with you. But before we dig in, I'd like to thank you by giving you a free gift. One thing that I will be touching on when I talk about the four most important things that I wish I had known relates to diet and nutrition. I'll be talking about some important features that every eating approach should have. If you don't already know, I created my own eating approach. It's called Automate Your Plate. It actually includes all the things I'm about to talk about when it comes to the diet portion of the four things that uh, I wish I had known. As a result, I lost 65 pounds in 13 weeks, and that was more than 15 years ago. That's right, more than 15 years ago, and I've maintained a very healthy and fit body. And the secret, it's based on common sense. It's based on balanced nutrition, and it's super easy to follow. Those that I've shared it with and have tried it correctly have had excellent results. They've lost the weight and they've been able to keep it off. So what I've done for you today is I put together a free checklist. I call it the automate your plate checklist. You can use it as your own little cheat sheet. It takes everything that I talk about in my book and that I teach in my online course. It's one of the nine directives in my book. And I basically, I step you through the whole process. Step one, step two, step three to automating your plate. And all you really have to do is print the checklist and follow each of the steps that I described throughout. And you'll be well on your way to automating your plate. And that'll be one less thing you have to worry about. You'll be able to take charge of this nutrition thing and be well on your way to losing the weight you want to lose. I'm telling you, this automate your plate thing that I created, that I scribbled down on a piece of paper 15 years ago, if it wasn't for that automate your plate portion of the nine directives in my book, I would not be sitting here today in the shape that I'm in. I can tell you that. So for those of you listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can go to ethanlarock.com forward slash automate and you can download it there. And if you are watching on YouTube, I provided a link down below. You can click on it and you can start using it today. Okay, let's start peeling back the onion a little bit today. 
This morning what I did is I sat down quietly by myself and I pictured myself sitting where you are today, sitting straight across from me, a younger version of myself, a version of me that hasn't experienced all the things that I've experienced up until now. And my goal in mind was to tell myself, these are the things that I've learned. These are the four most important things when it comes to your health and fitness that I would put into your life today in order to get you where you want to be as quickly and as effectively as possible and to help save you all the pain and anguish and especially to save you from wasting your time because time is the most important thing and most valuable thing we all have. And my goal today is to share with you uh, the four things that I would tell myself if I could actually sit across from the younger version of me and give myself the best advice that I could come up with. So my suggestion is that you pause the video right now. Go grab a journal, go grab a glass of water, get comfortable, and get ready to write down some things because I'm gonna share with you the four most important things that I've learned along my journey. And I'm gonna spell out to you why each one of those is important. And I'm gonna get into some specifics. So you may just find this video very valuable. Okay, so. Before we get started, I'm gonna be referring to my computer, which is right there. I'm gonna be looking at some notes today because I don't wanna miss anything. There's a lot of things that I wanna go over and I wanna make sure that, um, again, younger Ethan, <laughs> I wanna make sure that you're getting everything. You're not, I'm not skipping some things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer to my notes a little bit today, which is different than what I normally do. But I really do wanna make sure that I touch on everything and I'm really clear about it. So the first thing I want to jump into is, and it's an obvious one, if you've been watching my show each week, or if you've had a chance to read my book, you're going to understand that what my perspective is, that psychology is the number one most important thing when it comes to your health and fitness. By now, you may be getting tired of hearing me say it, and uh, I'm sorry about that if that is the case, but my question to you is, if you know what my opinion is on this, and you know that psychology quite possibly could be the most important part of your whole health and fitness uh, journey, getting, to you where, getting you to where you wanna be, then what are you doing about it? Have you done any, anything about it? Have you decided to take some action? Have you decided to sit down and ask yourself the questions? You know, I don't, I don't wanna harp on you and I don't wanna go much farther on it because a, a lot of my videos are about this psychology thing. You know, my book goes deep on it and talks really deep on all the reasons why psychology is the most important part of your whole health and fitness journey. So what I want you to do when, when, it, when I talk about psychology and why it's so important, what I want you to do is I want you to instead of when you have a, when, when you decide that you want to lose weight and when you decide you want to get started with, with your health and fitness and taking everything back, what I want you to do is I want you, instead of thinking about what's the quickest way I can lose weight, you know, what's the best diet for losing weight? What is the, um, the best diet for getting a six pack? Uh, what's the best workout for making my arms bigger? You know, what's the best workout that will, um, you know, give me a tiny waist to help me fit into that dress? And you start jumping into all the how, you know, all the how questions. How do I do it? I want you to instead step back and I want you to ask some key questions. Some examples might be, what does healthy mean to you? What does healthy mean to me? Is what you should be asking yourself. What is it? Does healthy mean having a six pack? Does healthy and fit mean having a 28 inch waist? Does healthy and fit mean being skinny? Like what exactly does being healthy and fit mean to you? What does it mean to you? Can you see it? Here's a question. What would the future version of you being healthy, healthy and fit look like? What would you look like? What would you feel like? How would your life be? Too many times we get so focused on we need to lose 10 pounds or we need to lose 15 pounds or we need, oh my gosh, I got to lose some weight. I need to lose a little bit of weight around my waist or I want to get ready for that 
summer's coming up and I need to get ready for the beach or I have this big wedding to go to and I want to look good for the wedding so I want to get in that suit that I have in the closet and I can't fit in it so I want to get myself back in shape and we never take a moment just to step back and think what would the future me be like what would that look like and there's a reason I'm asking you to ask these that question because it's based on psychology Without being able to connect, without being able to see what that would be like in your mind and actually taking the time to think about it a little bit, it's very hard to stay um, committed for the long term. It's very hard to stay focused and committed because there isn't really anything tangible that you can relate to. There's nothing that you're going to see on the horizon, like really see on the horizon that is obtainable, that is you. So when you take the mo- take a moment, you sit down and you you jot down, you know, what would it, what would I look like? What would my hair look like? What would my body look like? What would my my shoulders look like? You know, and you just start right from the top of your head and you work your way down and really get a clear picture. That's the starting point. Now you know who that person is. Now you know the basic thing. It's a real basic and fundamental thing. It's not the key thing. It's not the key thing that's going to drive you forward and keep you motivated. But it's one of many things. And the next thing you have to ask yourself is why? Why do I want to become healthy and fit? Why is it important to me? And if the answer is because, oh, the summer's coming up and I want to look good. Or I've got this thing to go to and I want to look good. Then your chances of having a long-term solution to your weight loss, like on the long term, like me, like 15 plus years of being healthy and fit, not worrying about all these things about what, oh gosh, I can't take my shirt off and walk along the beach because, you know, my stomach's hanging out or I can't wear this clothing because I remember what that was like, by the way. I remember it like vividly, not wanting to wear revealing clothing and wanting to wear as much black as I can because black really does make you look thinner and wanting to avoid white colors and wanting to avoid stripes that go this way because they make you look really huge. I remember what that was like, but the goal really needs to be something longer than that. Why? Why do I want to be healthy and fit? And it's got to be stuff that's more than just, it needs to be more than about vanity. It needs to be about serious things that have connect to you on an emotional level. I've talked about it before. You know, the, you got to have your, find your why. And then you got to ask the question why. So if, if, you, if you need to, any more instruction on that, you can go back to one of my previous episodes where I went really deep on the importance of why and the question why. I think it's called the most important question you should be asking or something like that. And that'll help you out there. You need to ask yourself questions like, how much weight do I actually need to lose? You know, how much weight do I need to lose? Um, instead of saying, I just need to lose some weight. See the difference in those two questions? One is general, and one is saying, I need to get specific. That's the key. That's the difference. And the next thing you have to ask yourself is, am I willing to commit? Am I willing to commit to make change for myself? Am I willing to take action? Am I willing to sit down and figure this thing out? And I'm going to tell myself, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to commit. I'm not afraid to take some time and put some effort in and and write some things down and take charge of my life. You got to ask yourself those questions because those are the ones that really will get you to where you want to be. If you think the answer is I need to do three sets of push-ups followed by three sets of chin-ups followed by four sets of uh, sit-ups followed by eight jumping jacks, you know what I mean? If you think the workout is what's going to get you healthy and fit, just focusing on the best workout plan, or if I, you know, do the automate your plate, or if I do intermittent fasting, or if I do the um, paleo diet, or whatever it is you decide from a nutrition standpoint, if you think that's the answer, then you're going to be really surprised in life, because those are just parts of the whole puzzle. Psychology is where it all starts. For example, do I associate pain or pleasure with working out? That's a question. When it comes to working out or exercise, so there's many examples, running, jogging, 
going to the gym, going to your yoga class, going to play tennis, I don't know, going to boot camp, going to hit training, whatever it might be. What do you think about that? Do you dread it? Are you, are, is it something that you dread? And then ask yourself, why? Why do I dread that? You know, why, why do I associate pain with that? Was it something that happened to you in the past? Well, I can tell you right now, the past is just the past. Dwelling on the past and fearing your future because of the past, it's a losing battle. It's not worth wasting your time and effort on. There are things you can learn from the past, like what I'm sharing with you today, that can help you benefit in the future. But if you're living in fear or you're living in the mindset that taking care of my health and fitness is painful, that going to the gym is going to be painful, and you do, can't find a way of turning that around and making it pleasurable, making it something that you're excited about, making it something that you put priority on and you want to have in your life seriously. Like, I mean, seriously, not just, oh, I want to lose a few pounds, but I'm serious. I really want this. I really want to be that future person I just envisioned. And I want that in my life. I want to be able to laugh. I want to be able to run with the kids. I want to be able to feel true joy in my life. Then you really need to ask yourself, am I willing to commit to making this level of change in my life? Can I find pleasure in these activities? And maybe the whole problem is you're trying to follow something that someone else wants you to do or something that some guru on the internet wants you to follow. The truth is you need to do what's congruent with what you want to do in life. You need to do something that makes you happy. I talk about the gym because the gym makes me happy. I love going into the gym and lifting a heavy load of weight and taxing my body. And I love that thought in my mind that I know what I'm doing is good for me. That when I get through this little battle that I'm doing right now in the gym, for this hour that I've set aside, that I'm instantly going to feel amazing afterwards because I put myself through it and I know the good that it's doing for my body and for my mind and for my health overall. Now, another question you could ask yourself is, what am I doing right now? Ask yourself this, what am I doing right now that is holding me back from what I want? Am I avoiding thinking about health and fitness altogether. That could be a big problem. If you're not thinking about your health and fitness at all, and every once in a while you get a glimpse of something that makes you want to lose weight, but it's short lived. It just, it comes and it goes, it comes and it goes and no action ever gets put in place. You might want to ask yourself that, what am I doing to hold myself back? Are the things that I'm thinking, am I self-sabotaging myself? Am I dismissing all hope because I have a negative mindset about something? And then you got to ask yourself, what can I do to change it? What can I do today to change that? And what am I going to do today to take back my life, to get things going the way I want it to go? Because this psychology thing I talk about, it's not just about your health and fitness. It's about your health first, but then it's about your career, your relationships, your finances. It affects everything. The way you think, the things you come up with in life, everything you own in this world, every relationship you've ever grown and nurtured and have, your children, your wife, your home, your car, your business, every single thing you have, it started right here. It started in your mind with a thought. And the reason those things are in your life right now are because you took that thought, you put importance on that thought, and you willed it into your life. Every single thing. I know it sounds like, like kind of like a woo-woo type stuff, but it's absolutely true. It's one of the most true things I know. And that's why I'm taking a little bit of time on this very first thing, this psychology thing. 
because it relates to everything in your life. And I do personally believe that health and fitness is the foundation. I believe when you have a healthy body and a healthy mind, you have a much better chance in life at all those other things you want in life. It helps you with relationships, obviously, right? We as humans, were attracted to beauty. So if, you, if you're young and you're, you're looking to get, or even if you're old and you're looking to get into a new relationship, you have a much better chance when you have some, when you take care of yourself, you know, on instinctively people and people see each other and they say, they judge people in split seconds. Is that person healthy? Is that person someone that I could be with for a long period of time? On the subconscious level, we're talking about psychology again. Many of us think these things automatically and we don't even know it. So being healthy and fit in life, for a career even, you walk into the room and the, and the interviewer is sitting you down and they're about to ask you some questions. Well, guess what they're doing when you walk in the room? They're watching how you carry yourself. They're looking at how you look and how you present. They look at the clothes you're wearing. They look at the way you are acting. They look at the way you are, your confidence exudes from you. And they look for any kind of a flaw. They're trying to, they're judging you. Believe it or not, they're judging you in seconds. And if you're a healthy and fit person who's confident, who knows what they're bringing to the table, then you have a much better chance of landing that job or making your way up through to the career that you want in the company you're in. And I could go on literally for over an hour about psychology and the importance of psychology. <laughs> I don't want to bore you to death with it. So that is the number one thing that I would tell you. If I was sitting across from young me and I could say the most important thing when it comes to getting your health and fitness back is your psychology. And I bet you'd be in shock. You'd be going, well, what do you mean psychology? It's about working out in the gym. I know that because I read it in all the books. No, it's your psychology. So that's enough on that. So number two, the number two most important thing after you've addressed your psychology, I would say like there, there, there is no like one, two, three, four. There really isn't. If I can try to imagine it being that way and, 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 and not what it really is, because really it's all like this. This is the way it all is when it comes to your health and fitness. All these things I talk about, they're all interwoven to each other. They don't happen in series, right? They happen all together all at once. But in order to get your mind around the importance of things, the first thing is psychology. Number two is your diet, your nutrition, what you're eating, what you're putting in your, in your body every day. So as I talk about diet, I'm going to share with you why diet is more important than exercise any day, hands down. If you run on a treadmill for 30 minutes, constantly for 30 minutes at a decent pace, you're going to burn roughly 300 calories total. It can be anywhere between 280 to 520 calories, depending on what level you're running at. But on average, you're going to burn around 300 ish calories. If you do what I do and you go into the gym and you work out for an hour or less, um, doing resistance training, for example, you're going to burn about the same. You're going to burn about 300 ish calories. You know, you're not, you're not going too heavy, heavy at it. And you're not banging it out too hard, but you're just going enough to, to stimulate the muscles and, and to rest in between sets. You're going to burn about 300 calories. Okay. So I'm going to share with you just some, some information about some of the foods we eat. Okay. A Big Mac at McDonald's equals 563 calories. And if you run on a treadmill and you're burning 300 calories for a half hour of running solid, okay, what does that say about the rest of your life when you're not running and you're just kind of sitting around? How many calories are you actually burning then? Well, introduce this 563 calorie um, piece of food that you can consume in literally two minutes and how are you going to win against that? If you're a person who likes chocolate bars, for instance, maybe you get that snack and you start feeling, you start feeling during the day, you start feeling a little tired and you figure I'll just grab a chocolate bar and I'll eat that and it'll, it'll satisfy me. It'll get me through. Well, that chocolate bar is going to be roughly 488 calories, 488 calories. Um, say you, you, you get home and you're feeling a little bit tired and 
you're hungry and you haven't been really eating consistently, so you, you have this, this craving and you go grab a couple chocolate chip cookies. Those are going to be about 156 calories for two chocolate chip cookies. Okay, 156 calories. Remember, 30 minutes to run on the treadmill. 30 minutes running on the treadmill and I burn 300 calories. I pop two chocolate chip cookies in my mouth and almost half of that is gone. If you go to a fast food joint and you order a small fry, just a small French fry, you're looking at 220 calories. So you're probably running on that treadmill for about 20 minutes-ish in order to get that, to burn that up. It's a losing battle. Eating poorly, if you're doing that, if you're eating poorly and you're just eating whatever you decide each day without any plan in place, okay, for your nutrition, you're setting yourself up for a lifetime of being overweight, period. You need to have some sort of an eating approach that you're on. It doesn't have to be mine, my automate your plate eating approach. It doesn't, and I'm not here to tell you that. What I'm here to tell you is that you need to have a plan for what you're going to eat and it has to be something that you control and that you have some plan for. It cannot be whatever my wife cooks me when I get home or whatever my husband makes when I get home. It can't be that. It needs to be something that you have thought out and that you're planning to do each day. Some of us think we're eating healthy when we're not. You need to really think about these things you buy at the store that say low fat, for example or um, guys that are into the gym like me, these protein shakes and these protein bars, you need to look and see how many calories are in those things and, you, and you'll understand what I'm saying. Now I'm about to say something that's totally in conflict with that and counterintuitive to that. And one of the most controversial things that I bring up when I talk, when I talk about diet, when I talk about nutrition. And this thing is that you shouldn't count calories at all. You shouldn't be counting calories. You shouldn't be wasting your time. The reason I say this is because it fails us on a psychological level. It goes back to point number one, right? Counting calories is something that is easy to do when you first start. When you first start out, you want to get your fitness back. You want to lose that weight. And you start looking at all the calories and you start feeling like you're going to control what you're going to eat. And you make sure that everything fits in with your calorie spend per day so that you're in a calorie deficit and that you can lose some weight. Problem is as time goes by, that becomes so mundane and boring, everybody quits, everybody stops doing it on the most part. There's a rare few, and usually those are fitness trainers, that can stay on that kind of a regimen for a long period of time. I just see it as a very non-value added thing to do. You know, what? how can you get excited about counting calories? and then see yourself doing it for the rest of your life. It's like a dumbed down approach to getting your fitness back. You're focusing on this one little thing over here when there's a million things going on over here that you really should be taking care of. It's, it's, a, no, it's, a, real, it's a no brainer. And when it comes to diet, your diet needs to include a well laid out eating approach. It needs to include protein, low glycemic carbohydrates and healthy fats in every single meal you eat. That's the way the body's made to work. It's made to work in balance and in harmony. I personally, for years, lived under the belief that protein had to be high, carbs needed to be low, and fats were bad for you. In the early days, that's what I believed. And that's what many still do believe. But that's just not the truth. That's what, not what I've learned in life. I learned once I started introducing balance into my life in many ways, but in my nutrition as well, that's when true change started to happen. That's when my body started to function properly. That's when I was able to, you know, metabolize things properly. The diet should be easy. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to be a chef in order to uh, be successful at the diet you plan to do. You know, it's got to be real simple. Get these simple ingredients, put them into, in some sort of a heat, whether it be the oven or a barbecue or a George Foreman grill, or as long as it's not a deep fryer, you're doing good. And it needs to be real simple. 
you know, using simple spices, salt, pepper, you know, some sort of ingredients that you can get on the shelf easily at the grocery store and you, and, and healthy fats, you know, when you're cooking, put things in olive oil or put a little bit of coconut oil on there or do something real simple. And it, it doesn't have to be something that you have to follow a cookbook and cook, you know, chop it up into this many ounces and then do it for this period of time and then take it out and let it rest and then put it back in and then do this other thing. When you start getting into that complex of a cooking approach, right, when you're preparing your diet plan, you're just setting yourself up for future failure. You may have some short, short-term short wins. You may, may stick to it for a couple weeks, two, three, four weeks. But eventually what will happen is it becomes so cumbersome you just, you'll throw your hands up and you'll just stop doing it. It's human nature. And the other reason that I, that I stress that it should be a well thought out eating approach and plan is because if you do have a plan in place and you're following it, it stops temptation from coming at you because you're, you're, you've been fed. You have the nutrition you need throughout the day. It's balanced nutrition. You're not starving yourself, right? So that when things come at you like, hey, Charlie, do you want, you know, do you want us to pick you up something for lunch? We're all going for lunch. Do you want us to pick you something up? You're not immediately thinking high calorie. I want something high calorie because I'm tired and I feel run down. Yeah, please get me this thing. Eventually what will happen is people will come up to you and they'll say, hey, do you want, what do you want us to pick up? We're going to get some pizza. What, what kind do you like? Do you want vegetarian? And you'll just say, no, I'm taking, I'm good. When you guys get back, I'll hang out with you guys, but I'm not, I just don't want to eat that junk. That's where you'll get to. And I guess the best way I can kind of describe why this is important is, I don't know if you've ever gone grocery shopping when you're hungry before. If you have, you may notice that the things you put in your grocery cart are a lot different than if you weren't starving hungry when you were grocery shopping. You're gonna put more high calorie foods in there, right? You're gonna put cookies or chips or all kinds of dips and breads and all those yummy things, right, into your cart. It's because your body's actually craving some calories. That's what it's all about. It wants to be fed. And if you don't go to the grocery store hungry, you eat properly, and I suggest just this, before you ever go to the grocery store to go shopping, eat before you go. And your, your decisions will no longer come from this instinct this, this craving for calories, it'll come from intelligence. It'll be, you'll be getting things that you planned out to put into that cart because that really is key. Whatever you bring home and you put into your house, so you say you just get weak that one day and you, and you go, ah, it won't hurt. I'm just going to grab that bag of cookies or, ah, you know what? I'm starving. I just want something. Just this once won't hurt. And you tell yourself that and next thing you know, you come home and your cart's full of a bunch of junk, right? That you love to eat when you're tempted. Well, guess what? It's going to end up in your mouth and it's going to end up in your body. And it's going to, and if you do it enough, it's going to end up in your body more times than you want it to. So your well laid out plan should definitely battle and prevent all these hunger related decisions from taking place when it comes to your nutrition. So ask yourself when you are looking for that diet that you want to do, Okay, whatever it might be, and it doesn't have to be my eating approach, it could be anything, is ask yourself, can I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? For the rest of my life, could I see myself eating this way? And if the answer is, I don't really think so, I, could, I just don't care because I just want to lose those 15 pounds, so I'm going to do it. If that's your answer, then you're going to be back here over and over again revisiting what the best diet is because that's the truth you really do need to find something that you can see yourself staying on for the long term something you're going to stick to something you're going to be happy about something you're going to be satisfied with and something that doesn't take up all your time that's the truth that's how we succeed when we find something that has the least resistance the least amount of effort that is easy for us to do that doesn't overwhelm us that gives us some sort of satisfaction and joy when we do do it. So when we eat it, it does taste good and it's something we can look forward to still. Then that's how you win when it comes to your nutrition. It has to have all those things because we're just, we're people. We all want something that tastes good, is easy to follow, 
and it's something that you know we can live with for the rest of our life that's what we want and when you find that then that's a diet that i would stick to if i was you and the last part when it comes to diet that i would suggest is that you drink plenty of water i'm talking eight times a day i want you to drink 16 ounces of water one of the tall glasses in your in your in your cabinet because water is essential. Water is, is involved in every little thing that takes place in your body. You know, all the transfer of nutrients into the cells, all of the shifting back and forth, all the um, filtering of waste throughout your body, everything. Water is involved in that. And when you have low, when you're dehydrated and you don't have enough water, everything gets bound up and doesn't function properly. So water is extremely important. And that's why I include that actually in my automate your plate um, eating approach. That's why I make water an important part of that. So the third most important thing I wish I had known that I would share with myself is the importance of exercise and rest. So you've got your psychology right, your thinking right, you're being really intelligent about the questions you're asking yourself and you're taking the time to answer those questions and you're taking the time to put action into your life, you're eating correctly, you've got a well laid out plan and you're sticking to it because it's easy to stick to because it makes sense to you. It's something you can live with for the long term. Well, the third most important thing, yes, is exercise and rest. And they go hand in hand. And I'll tell you why. First of all, exercise should be, I've said this before, it needs to be congruent with what you want to do in life. It has to match your spirit. It has to match your lifestyle. It can't be something that you're just following because somebody on the internet told you to do it. Okay? I do have my own personal suggestions. I think resistance training is the best way. I know it to be for myself. But that's because I actually enjoy doing resistance training. Is every minute of it a pleasure fest? No. There are times, I can recall many times, I can recall times in my early years lifting so hard that I got sick, but it was always for, it was always because I wanted to win at what I was doing. I enjoyed the challenge. And over the years, I decided that you didn't have to go that far. And I realized that in order to get some good results. And now I've got it down to such a simple thing. The workouts I do are so simple and um, they get me great results. And I'm 51 years old and I'm, and, and they also are safe. You know, my joints don't hurt. I don't have injuries and I've had a myriad of injuries in the past that I've learned from. And that gets into my next thing about exercise is you shouldn't overdo it. You know, I have had, if I, if I think back, I've had tendonitis in both my shoulders. I've had issues with tennis elbow in both my elbows. Um, the worst one, I, every once in a while I used to mess my back up pretty bad. I'd find myself laid out because I used to do a lot of heavy lifting. I've had a torn meniscus in my right knee, which really caused issues for a couple of years. I couldn't walk really well. My, um, my leg wouldn't, I went to, a, got to a point where my leg wouldn't bend and then it went and it wouldn't straighten. And I found myself having to go see a specialist and taking time out of my schedule and going to find out what possibly could be wrong with me and that whole thing. And what it, that all stemmed down to is I was going way too heavy now that I look back on my leg workout days. Um, Cause there are some really good benefits to working out heavy with your legs, but I was going to extremes. Extremes that a human being should not go to, okay? On a leg press day, or sorry, on leg day, I would do 24 times 45 pound plates all the time on leg day. I would do squats with four to five plates a side on leg day. And what that does is when you're always going for the heavy, heavy, heavy weight um, to extremes like that, you're setting yourself up for injuries for sure. Because eventually your body is going to give. It's not, it, you're human, you're, you're a biological creature, you're not a machine. And many times I had myself believing in the past that I was kind of indestructible, that I could do anything I set my mind to. And it was just a mindset. I've had that mindset for a very long time in my life. And it's, it's gotten me some good places in life, but it's also got me injured, to be honest with you. 
So don't overdo it. That's a big, that's a big um, suggestion that I would give you. And in regard to the rest part, when it comes to training, I would just make sure that if you are doing some sort of exercise, and there's so many different types of exercise out there, so it's, it's hard for me to be specific about it, but just make sure if you're doing something to a body part in your body, you're giving it at least one day to rest. So say you were in the gym and you were doing biceps. Give those biceps at least a day to rest before you do something else that's involving your biceps because they need time to heal and grow. That's when muscles really do grow. It's not during the workout. It's while you're resting. That's the part people forget. So say you're doing yoga and you're, and you're going day after day after day after day doing yoga. Well, make sure that if you're doing it, you're not doing the same exact yoga um, session. You know, hitting yourself in the same exact way because your body doesn't have enough time to heal. You need to take time and heal, let your body heal correctly. And the other thing I'd talk about when it comes to rest is you need to be getting at least seven to 10 hours of sleep at night. You know, they say between seven and 10. I found that my happy spot is anywhere between seven and a half to eight, honestly. But any less than that, you do all kinds of horrible things to yourself. You put yourself into a really bad place on a hormonal level. Uh, your cortisol levels can spike and it just sets you up for like kind of a, not a really good starting point for getting your health and fitness back. So take my word on it there as well. Get your sleep. Don't stay up all night and then go to work early in the morning on like five hours of sleep. You may think you're doing something good. You may think you're living your life fuller or getting more done or whatever it might be, but you're actually setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for not being in the optimal place you want to be. And number four, number four, one of the most important things I wish I had known is that you need to have a plan in your life that ties all these things together, that ties together your psychology, that ties together your diet, that ties together your training, that ties together your rest, that ties together all these things. You need to actually have an intentional plan. At the end of all my videos, you always hear me say, stay healthy, be happy, and live your life with intention. That's what this is about. It's about intention. And intention comes from thinking and then putting plans in place. It's that simple. I'm trying to put it in the most simple terms I can. But this, it, number four, is extremely important. If I, if I had myself sitting to where you are today and I could talk to my younger self, these are the things that I would share. And then I would say, before we leave this room today, I want you to sit down on a piece of paper. I want you to write out the map. I want you to write this all out. I want you to have a plan. I want you to put it together today. I want you to take back your life today and put this plan in place. And that's what I'm saying to you today. That's what I want you to do. If you just listen to this and take this advice and follow these four little things, and I know they're not all super simple to do. They take some effort. They take some action on your part. But if you do them, these are the real answers for losing weight, winning at weight loss, and changing your life forever, seriously. These are the things. It's not the diet. It's not just the workout. It's not following this guru. It's not buying this bottle of pills that can help me lose the weight that I want to lose in 30 days and all these crazy things that are thrown at you. It's not about that secret supplement. It's not about that video series you could buy. It's not about just automate your plate. You know, following Ethan's automate your plate. It's not about just any of these things. It's about all of these things I just talked about today. And then tying them all together with this plan at the end. Your plan. Your plan that you've developed. That you're going to follow. That you're going to stay committed to. Because that's how we win. And that's what I want for you. I want you to win. And if part of your plan is to start some sort of new nutritional approach, like I suggested, then yes, I did create an eating approach called Automate Your Plate. I put it together 15 years ago. I used it to lose 65 pounds in 13 weeks. Yep. But that was more than 15 years ago. 
and I've maintained a healthy body ever since. So what I did is I put together a checklist, I call it, the Automate Your Plate Checklist that simplifies everything that I teach in my book and in the online course. And it just simplifies and steps you through the whole process. Do this, do this, do this, and do this. It's like a paint by numbers approach that'll get you to where you wanna be with your nutrition. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can get that by going to www.ethanlarock.com forward slash automate. And if you are watching on YouTube, I have provided a link down below and you can get it there. So for those of you who stayed to the end of the video, the steps that I shared with you today, the four most important things that I wish I had known back then, what was the very first one that I shared? Sum it up in one word. And then what I'd like you to do is leave me a comment with that word. See if you remember, see if you know what it is and share it in the comments because that one word that one important word holds the key to every single thing you've ever wanted in your life. And that's the truth. So I'm going to leave you with that. Until we meet again, stay healthy, be happy, and live your life with intention every single day.